In this video, we will show you how to get started using Magaya. To download the Magaya products, visit our homepage at magaya.com. From here, you can visit the download section. Once here, you can select which product you would like to download either the Magaya Cargo System, the Magaya WMS, the Magaya Commerce System, or the Magaya Supply Chain Solution. Let's assume we're going to download the Magaya Cargo System. We'll select the Download Now hyperlink, and from here we're required to enter in all the required information, such as our first name, your last name, your company name, your title, your email address, your full mailing address, which country you're downloading from, your phone number, and your company's website address. Then tell us a little bit about your company. Select the category that best describes your company. For example, a freight forwarder. Are your operations currently automated? Yes or no? If yes, what software system? What accounting software do you currently use? How did you hear about Magaya? And if you're working with a salesperson or Magaya partner, please provide that name as well. Once you've done that, you select the register button. And it tells you, thank you for choosing the Magaya Cargo system. An email message has been sent to you with the download instructions. Once you receive that email, you can simply download the program and begin the installation. Now we'll proceed to show you how to get started using our startup wizard after you have successfully installed the software. Once you launch your Magaya installation for the first time, a startup wizard will launch, like this one. The wizard will assist you through the setup of your system. The following steps will guide you through obtaining a Magaya network ID for your company, entering basic information such as company name, address, etc. Entering entities frequently used by your company such as land, air, and ocean carriers. Choosing the ports most commonly used by your company. Choosing which currency your company uses. To continue, we will select Next. The next step is associating your Magaya Network ID to your installation or creating a new one. If you already have been assigned one, simply enter the ID here and the password below. If you downloaded the software from the Magaya website and provided us with all of your information, then select the radio button next to I downloaded the Magaya software from the web and entered my email address and company information into the Magaya website. Next you enter in your email address that you previously provided us while downloading the software. In either scenario, by Magaya Network ID or by your email address, we will retrieve the information you provided and populate all of that information for you. Let's take a moment and demonstrate that. Let's assume I already had an ID. I will enter that here and my password below. Once I do so, I select Next. Here, I tell the system what type of company I am, such as a freight forwarder, airline carrier, or an ocean carrier. If your company operates a bonded warehouse, please place a check mark in the box that says, yes, this company has a bonded warehouse. Once you have completed this, click on Next. 
Here, you can see now that the system has retrieved your company information from the information you had previously provided. Simply review the information and make any corrections or changes as needed. Once you have completed this, select Next. Here, your company's full address is displayed. Here again, make any corrections or changes as needed. Let's go back and demonstrate how to proceed if we have not provided any information and we will complete all the steps required. Here, I select the radio button that says, I have not provided any information to Magaya Corporation. Next, select your company type as previously described and if you use a bonded warehouse. Once you have completed this, click on Next. Here, enter in the basic information for your company, such as your company name, your company's phone number, next, your fax number, then enter in your email address, then your company's website, Next, enter in the primary contact's first name of your company and last name below. Once you have completed, select Next and enter in your company's full address. Once you have completed that, select Next. Here, you can enter in your company's IATA code, FMC code, SCAC code, and TSA number. One important note here is you're only required to enter in the information you have. If you do not have one or any of these, you can simply skip the step. Once you have completed this, select Next. Next, you select the home currency used by your company. You can do that by selecting your currency from the drop-down list. If your company uses more than one currency, place a check mark next to, yes, my company works with more than one currency. Once you do that, after you complete the wizard, in Options, Configuration, then Accounting, you can select all the currencies that you currently use. If your currency is not listed in the drop-down list here, you can simply click on Add Currency, and then the Add button here to add your currency. Once you have completed that step, select Next. Here, the system will import the Schedule B, D, and K codes. Once it has completed these steps, simply select Next. The next step is to select the air carriers you most commonly work with. Although you are not required to do this now, the more information you have set up in the system initially will save you time later. You can organize this by selecting the description header. To add an airline, simply highlight the airline and select Add. If you made a mistake and would like to remove one, simply highlight it and select Remove. Once you have completed that step, select Next. Once you have completed that step, select Next. Here, you select the most commonly used ocean and land carriers. Simply repeat this as we described before, and here again, you can skip this if you would like to for now. Once you select Next, you can set up the ports you most commonly use. On the left hand side are the countries and you can organize these alphabetically as well. Once you select a country, the list of available ports in that country are displayed in the center. 
Here again, you can sort by code or name. If you double click on a port, you can see if it is a maritime, rail, road, air, or other type of port. To close this window, select Cancel. To add the port to your list, simply select Add as you did for the carriers. Once you add the port, you can also link the Schedule D code for domestic U.S. ports or the Schedule K ports for foreign ports. This is necessary if you will be filing the SED or EEI through Magaya directly to AES Direct. To do this, simply double click on the port you have added and the port dialog box will appear. Next, select the tab for US Customs Codes. To link a Schedule D or K code, select the button you desire and you will get a list of the codes. To filter the list to find the code quicker, select the filter button and then use the standard option. Enter in the information you would filter by. For example, for US or Schedule D codes, enter in the city name and select OK or press Enter. The list will be filtered and you can then select from the list. To remove the filter, select the Unfilter button. Continue to do this for all of your ports. If you're linking a Schedule K for a foreign port, one important tip is to first filter by city name. If the port does not appear, then filter by country name. It is not uncommon to find a Schedule K that will say, for example, all Western ports for a specific country or all Caribbean ports. Once you have completed this, select Next. The last step is to create your Magaya Network ID and password. To do so, enter in a password below. Confirm your password below and then select Create ID. Once you have done this, the system will create a Magaya Network ID for you and it is very important to note, by default, the administrator password to the Magaya Explorer is the same as your Magaya Network ID password. We will cover how to change this password and how to create additional users and passwords in the later overview videos. Once you have completed this, select Next. This is now the final step to complete your initial setup. And once you select Finish, your communication server will automatically be initiated and set up as well. The Magaya communication server is what provides all the communication for the Magaya network and allows you to communicate with other participants and provide real-time tracking to your customers 24 hours a day. This concludes our video on how to use the Startup Wizard.